If you thought flat earthers are funny, wait till you hear about Chaz. The mayor of Seattle, Jenny Durkin, has remarked that the formation of an autonomous zone within the city of Seattle comprising of roughly six blocks could lead to a summer of love. The custodial killing of George Floyd in Minneapolis late last month has pushed the United States into civil unrest and the absurdity of it all can definitely not be given a miss. Anarchy and lawlessness have been reigning supreme in the US for the recent weeks gone by, and the direct influence and involvement of anti-social domestic terror organizations like Antifa. Stores have been looted en masse, storekeepers have been harassed, public and private property has been vandalized and destroyed, and the ordinary citizens have been terrorized by mobs having a free run under the influence of drugs and alcohol, which have been hallmarks of the left identity, historically so, around the world. USA, the first world country and a dream destination for the lovers of democracy, has now been defiled by those masquerading as anti-racism warriors. The protests, which may have started with noble intentions, were soon hijacked by lunatics who have waged a war against the American state and its way of life. The ridiculous nature of protests in the US is best epitomized by the creation of the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone, CHAZ as it is being called. Six blocks of Seattle city are now under the control of violent protesters who evicted the police out of the said areas using what many are calling missiles. The rebels who are now in control of the six blocks and who are relishing their newfound kingdom have stated that Chaz is not a part of the US and boards have been put up to the same effect, which say that those entering the zone are now leaving the US. Rudimentarily speaking, these buffoons have declared the six blocks of Seattle under their control as sovereign territory, weak barricades with modern-day Rambos guarding them with guns in their hands. Reportedly, the new sovereign Chaz is currently qualifying in parameters of a cringe fest amid a pandemic, with poetry readings, music and movie nights being a regular affair. Free fizzy water, snacks, sunscreen and hand sanitizer are also available, at whose expense though is not yet clear. The demands of the inhabitants of Chaz are many, the most prominent and bizarre ones being abolition of the Seattle Police Department and attached court system, retrial of all people of color currently serving a prison sentence for violent crime, the creation of restorative transformative accountability programs as a replacement for imprisonment, and along with the abolition of the police, also defunding the force, including cessation of payment of pensions, if that makes any sense. As a matter of fact, defund the police has emerged as a massive campaign in the US, a section of America consisting of the thinkers and the intellectuals who are mostly leftists have time and again shamed the US, whether it is the hue and cry and a massive campaign to make people believe that the earth is in fact flat and not spherical, or claims of the Apollo mission being false and part of a larger NASA American state conspiracy to now calling for the abolition of police departments and court systems, not much has changed. While you have the likes of John Oliver and his compatriots validating loot and arson, a CNN reporter shamelessly called the protests largely peaceful, with thuggery and vandalism in the backdrop. The American influencers have normalized violence as a substitute to protests, with some brain-dead zombies even suggesting that protesters looting shops and showrooms is a medium of them expressing their angst not to mention their frustration to be locked down due to the pandemic. Was George Floyd the first victim of police brutality in the US? No. However, he definitely was a stepping stone for all Trump haters to try their hands at effectuating chaos in the United States, months before the presidential elections. And why wouldn't they? With a formidable Donald Trump on one hand and a sham of a candidate called Joe Biden on the other, the November polls are really ones with no contestation. It is going to be a cakewalk for Donald Trump, more so due to the anarchy which leftists and their proxies have effected recently. They have consolidated Trump's voters even before his campaign truly kicks off. The deluded anti-America Americans, who by the way are playing right into the hands of America's external enemies for reasons best known to them, actually seem to believe that what they are doing is right.
The joke is on them if they believe they can defeat the American state with their little toy guns. While their actions could very well end up in gun battles across the country, they'd be fools to think that they will emerge victors in the aftermath of such clashes.